really connected world of manufacturing when it is done? Of course, there is a question of security, and that is that is being looked into. Of course, security is a big big issue. Uh, today, you are sending money online. That's also a subject of security, and that is being taken. Not that there are problems. Also, there is a big joke that our security experts globally, our global security experts are most intelligent people. Unfortunately, the hackers are always one step before them, one step ahead of them. That is the problem. But anyway, I'm sure the day will come when our experts will be one step ahead of the hackers. The day will come. But whatever it is, main point is that this, these are all, the, everything that is happening all over the world is disruption, complete disruption. We have, you know, we, have, we are dependent a lot on small scale industries. Germany, another country, is dependent a lot on small scale industry. What is the difference? The difference is not only the value of the money, value of the total amount invested, it is also in the focus. German small scale industries are all focused towards technology. We have been focused to the manufacturing in small scale. Unfortunately, we have not given the push which was necessary for manufacturing to come up. India has missed the bus quite a few times. Once to Taiwan and Singapore, once to China for manufacturing. We didn't give that much of importance. We gave important service and service look at service where it is today. We could have been at least somewhere near, even in manufacturing, which we couldn't do. So modern manufacturing has become completely different. Completely different today. And it is nothing like before. Nothing like the investment we do did in a drilling machine, a milling machine in a lathe and things like that. Nothing like that. This manufacturing will completely change. And I'll tell you what has changed it completely. Uh, the change is, of course, has come because of innovation. We, everything, all innovations today uh, in the manufacturing field is taking manufacturing one level higher. You know, the, the, you have all heard probably of additive manufacturing, which is called uh, 3D printing. This is bringing in a revolution, almost like the whole of industrial revolution in the, in the world. And this, this means that the complete change of the methods that we will adapt in future for manufacturing. If you look at the major domains where the need of manufacturing will be there, it can be defense, as uh, Admiral Harma quite rightly said, energy, communication, space, consumer and applied electronics. Applied electronics is there everywhere, in all our walks of life, applied electronics ever. So next gen applied electronics manufacturing innovation is going to come up in a very, very big way. And as it is already seen, it is becoming lightweight, modern, and reduce the cost by between 10 to 20 percent. It's already proven by innovative method of manufacturing. This additive manufacturing, uh, where, you, where you can almost copy ev everything. You, have, you know they, uh, there is a talk that very soon we have our arms, if somebody need, has an, lost an arm in accident, you will have an arm made by a 3D uh, printing machine. Why? with a much less cost than you could manufacture in any other way. And this is, this, will, this is bringing and will bring a complete disruption in our normal, normal uh, manufacturing. Partners will be universities, institutions. Today they are also partners, but unfortunately, as we were talking just now, Professor Das, that today we are not taking advantage of what, what is there in the universities for us. Yes, of course, we will have to take a risk, as Colonel Bakshi said in the morning. We have to take a risk. But taking a risk is part of business. If you are in business, you must take a risk. Otherwise, you are not worth to be in business. We, our tools, our standards, our methods, our control, our practices, our skills, therefore, in manufacturing, it's changing tremendously. Another major change is coming in the material science. So, lo so long we have been working only with steel. Well, we will have to continue to work with steel. But you know, this, the age that is coming is the age of semiconductor. The good old silicon, which has served us so well, 
is, will be gone in a few hours time. There will be no silicon semiconductor, as semiconductor. It will be new, new material like gallium arsenide, like a, a, a boron nitride and things like that. You have to know how to make things out of that. And believe me, these things will come more from the small scale than the big scale. The big scale will think big and do big. But no big, big manufacturer will go for doing the small things which are the heart of the power electronics that is going into all walks of our life, whether manufacturing, whether healthcare, whether financial transaction, everywhere. These will be made by the small scale industries only. And uh, if you ask me, the, uh, the, all the re renewable energy plants, the healthcare is going at transformation. As you know, as you know nanotechnology is coming in such a way that a particular medicine will go to a particular place in your body instead of spoiling, damaging the healthy cells. All this will be done by my small parts, small parts which will be something which the small scale industries can very much look forward to. We look forward to the small scale industries and everyone will not and will not and cannot get a job particularly in countries like India, China, where we have, we, are, we have such a big population. We take pride in young India. Every nation is looking at us green with envy that we have an average population so young like you, whereas Europe, China, Japan, US are full of old people. So they are green with envy. But this strength of young Indians can be either a strength or a weakness, depending on what we do to them. If we don't provide them with appropriate skills, if we do not go into manufacturing, service is fine, they are doing fine, I have my hats off for service industry that India has done. But unless you are manufacturing, where the job is either as an entrepreneur or as a job for, for others, doing job for others, manufacturing will give you the jobs. And these jobs are a must to make this young population our real strength of the nation rather than being, becoming a liability. So enterprisingness is very, very essential for us to see. And as I said, everybody will not get a job. So we, some of us have to be entrepreneurs. And you can see that mostly the owner in this enterprise, owner is the leader. Today, hardly any of them are trained properly so that they can lead the people. Also, if you look at the, 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 apart from the basic creativity that one has, the, I'll do something, I'll do something myself. Apart from that, there is also a, a major important one, people get fed up. People get fed up seeing the things, all that happen. You know, the major innovations, some of the major innovations in the world have been brought in by frustration. Why things should be like, done like that? Why can't it be done better? whether it's in a process, in manufacturing, in healthcare, wherever. So that has given rise to a lot of innovation, from small thing to big thing. All of you must have heard about the innovation where in village houses closed on all sides, which, has, which was dark even in the daytime, with that uh, bottle, plastic bottles put on with the holes on the roof, filled with water and bleaching powder. That's a great innovation. And another great innovation will be exactly similar thing on which billions of dollars probably is being spent is the wireless transmission of megawatt scale electricity. Now these are all the innovations that's happening that has changed the world more than that. But coming back to what I was, I was saying that we have those small scale industry which have not been developed. As to, 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 uh, many of us have got fed up but we have not been able to do it but you must do it that you must do things differently, to not what is being followed, whether it's bureaucracy or whether it's anything else. And of course then there is an arch of uh, creation. Arch of creation is there which is always, always uh, makes an entrepreneur an entrepreneur, no question about that. Another thing that I would like to point out that, well, I, was just, I just added uh, one word there, that it will be the age of the additive manufacturing. It will be fast, flexible, cost-efficient manufacture of anything from the 3D uh, CAD data directly to use additive process in which successive layers of material are laid under 
computer control. And that has many, many parts. That has many, many parts. It's not one industry we can do with. It's many, many parts. And that, that, is, that is where the small-scale industry should come. So electronic hardware is going to be the major thing for small scale and, and also large scale manufacturing in the coming years for India, if we don't miss the bus. The bus may not come again. We might lose it. If we lose it again, if we miss the bus, it may not come again. Then there's a story of uh, millions and billions. The, issued out by the government of India, I'll not go into that. But apparently there is a huge gap. In 2020, there will be a huge gap between the demand of electronics items and the production. The, the difference is, according to the government of India statistics, of the order of hundreds of billions of dollars. We will not be able to manufacture that in India. We have not the capacity, not that we can't. We of course can do that. The, but the capacity is not there. So that opens up a big potential for small and medium as well as large scale industries to, for, for the hardware of the electronics. So this, as I said, is based on semiconductor, in telecom, in consumer electrics, and various others. Would you know that um, there is a company in Bangalore which is making, all, for all over the world delivery, the front panel of the Toyota cars. Some of you might know about this. They brought down the number of processes from, I think, 12 or 13 to 8 or 9, something like that. And saved all over the world four Toyota millions of dollars, millions of dollars, just by that innovation, to bring out the number of processes. A large number, a large number of the part of the so-called Google Glass, which unfortunately has not been successful, uh, is, has been made in, uh, by the, by the small-scale manufacturers. We will have tomorrow, you know, you carry the backpack and you, have, you put your mobile there. The backpack will automatically charge you, charge your mobile. No big companies will be interested in doing this. You have to be an entrepreneur to do this. Two, two new, um, two innovations. I, there is a gentleman, ex-IIT, Harish Hande. He has provided the rural population with their lifestyle, almost changing the lifestyle almost. He, they, you know, there are a big group of rose pickers in Bangalore, uh, sorry, in Karnataka. Small girls, 12 years, 14 years old, they had to go out early in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, to pick up the rose, because the rose have to be pick up, picked up there. And they used to carry on their head a kerosene lamp. With the result, all of them became bald almost when, when they grow old, no marriage, nothing. And he is the one who, the, during the day, it will be charged a solar battery with, uh, with a complete um, uh, headband, solar battery, both hands are free for picking rose. And exactly the same thing for the midwives of the rural Andhra Pradesh, exactly the same thing has been done. He told me, that uh, when I started, I went to the banks for money. The bank said, oh, no, it doesn't look like something that will go. I, I don't think you can give you money. Today, all the banks are giving a queue to give them money, give him money. They, want, they said, please take money from us. That's what entrepreneurship is. You are prepared to sing for a soul, come what may. And if you are good, if your idea is good, you will soar. You will not sing. And now, as you see, the banks are giving a line like this. We have various a number of other things that is happening all over the world, which will change the manufacturing completely. And um, I, I can only mention one or two of this. You know, the screens of the computer. Today, you do everything on a computer screen. We see everything computer screen. Tomorrow, everything will be converted to a screen. When you are going to eat your breakfast before coming to the office, you can see the news on the breakfast table. On the fridge, walls of the fridge, you can see your emails. Everything can be converted to a screen, where there is no, no confidentiality and all that. And this needs minor parts. The smart city, you have heard of smart city? Smart cities will, uh, even if out of 100, even 20 comes, 30 comes, 40 comes. Do you know wh which one thing will be used most in the smart cities? 
a thing called sensors, different sensors. And to the best of my knowledge, no big companies will be interested in this. There will be different kinds of sensors, millions of such sensors will be necessary for even one smart city. And that is something that is waiting for you to take up, the challenge for uh, electronic hardware manufacturer. There, the, there is already a, you know, a, a car in the United States where if it is an accident, it will automatically uh, call 911. Now there is another one which is coming very soon, which will not only call for help in case of an accident, but it will give the details of, the, of whether the victims are bleeding, whether there is a trauma. And believe me, all these systems are not just software. There is a lot of hardware in it. And that's why I keep repeating myself that hardware is the, going, electronic hardware is going to be the key for any industry, small, medium, fast, and things like that. I have just heard of a super thin tooth sensor, in a tooth. It's like a, you know the children use a temporary um, uh, uh, tattoo, temporary tattoo on the hand. It's something like that on a teeth. You can't even notice it. And it will, it will signal the dentist concern about any cavity or bacterial infection forming in your mouth. Can you beat it? This, the, again, will require lots, lots of har, har, hardware, ele electronic hardware. Uh, in India, a lot of things has happened. Inetra is one handheld thing, then handheld ECG that made in India, taken ECG taken on an auto to the village, interior village where no car will go. And the patient cannot come to the hospital. Hospital is probably 20 kilometer, 30 kilometer away. That is a big innovation which has been done in India. And when it comes for, for mass manufacture, we will see, we, all of us will see how electronic hardware, um, hardware is uh, going forward. Well, these are some of the things that I thought I will uh, mention to you. But uh, one request I have, particularly for the young people, that you must, please, you must see that, that you, everybody, all amongst us, have the spirit amongst us. But it is not developed. We have not been able to do it. We have all done uh, jobs in our life. We have not done... Uh, uh, new, that we, we shall do something of our own, we have not said that. But I am sure oh, many of you, many amongst you are ready for doing this. And if you do this, India will get back its glory for manufacturing, which is very, very necessary. We, that is one thing is one thing. We are not the top ones in manufacture. Other countries are, three, four other countries are. We, as I said, we have missed the bus. But if you miss the bus too many times, the bus will not come again to us. Uh, long before us, the world's best brain, genius Einstein, has said once that the world we have created is a product of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our own thinking, which we have not been able to do. But we expect that all of you will be able to change your thinking. You know, a company, big, small, whatever, a company is like a, like a living organization. It has to continue to shed its skin. It has to change its method, focus the change, change the values, and the sum total of all these changes is transformation. So we are all waiting for that transformation to happen, and I'm sure we will see manufacturing change this complete facade in another four or five years. But for that, your assistance, your doing things differently is very necessary. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you, sir. It has been a very thought-provoking and stimulating lecture. A great lecture to start this session now. The second lecture is given by Mr. Sundipan Chakraborty, Chairman, TM International Logistic Limited. He is a very well-known personality in Indian industry, and his topic of his lecture is presentation. His topic of his lecture is on Indian manufacturing, 
bridging the gap between aspiration and reality. Sir. Uh, very good morning to all of you ladies, gentlemen, friends, my uh, learned colleagues on the dais, my learned people who are still waiting to listen to some of the proceedings. So thank you very much for being here. For me it is a privilege to be here and to speak to all of you and especially to students and uh, some staff faculty. You see, uh, this is a two days seminar or a conference where lots of things uh, will be told to you and uh, hopefully, uh, especially for the student community for you to learn. So I'll make a little departure and I'll tell you a few stories. I mean, it is no hard metal or anything. Few stories and certain things we have learnt. So whether, I mean, you accept our learning or not, that is up to you. But we learnt a lot of lessons. So, you see, the topic is a little esoteric, bridging the gap between an aspiration and a reality. So, the first thing is that what is aspiration? Now, aspiration as we define it, that uh, aspiration is an ambition which has to be fulfilled. So, therefore, you require some processes or something to do it. A dream, on the other hand, I mean, say, does not require a process, does not require anything to be fulfilled. A dream is a dream. So, moment you convert a dream into an aspiration, or you think of converting any dreams into aspiration, you must know how to do it. And uh, for you to know how to do it, there has to be a mechanism to articulate your aspiration and find ways and means to do it. So, it is done by a very simple method in our group of companies, which is a Tata group of companies, where I have had the privilege of working and still working for more than 43 years. It is captured in the mission and vision of the various companies, or various individuals, or various organizations. So the mission and vision, you have an aspiration, and that is followed by the mission and vision, which tells you two things, what you want to do and how you want to do. If you don't have both, then it is not going to happen, so aspiration to reality, you require a mission and vision which will tell you that what you want to do and how you want to do. And in the process, you go and do learnings. That's the dream. So the first story I'll tell you is about my parent company, which is Tata Steel, more than 100 years old. And a series of lessons which we learned through more than 100 years. Tata, uh, rather, Mr. Tata, he had a dream in, 19, in 1882. He had a dream. So his dream was, he had four, I mean, he saw four things, or he dreamt of four things. First is to have a steel company in India. Second is to have a hydroelectric electricity company in India. The third is to have a unique institute of education in India. And the fourth is, to have a hotel which no one has ever seen before. Now, he was not aware of mission, vision and all those things then. But what he required was a purpose. You see, English is a great language. You have different words at different times. So, his aspirations were driven by a purpose and that purpose was unique. Purpose was Swadeshi. Every pound of steel which came to India came from England. So he said, I'm going to have a steel plant. The power companies were all English. He said, I'm going to have an Indian company. Education, they were great institutes, but nothing like Indian <coughs> Institute of Science. I mean, I'm not going to talk about that story now. Hotel. He was not allowed to get into one of those royal British hotels. So he said, alongside, I'll make the best hotel in the country, so which was Taj Mahal, Mumbai. Now, so the purpose was Swadeshi. And that started driving in. Okay. 
So let me talk about now the Tata Steel story. So moment you have a aspiration, you have the purpose, so what is the next step? The next step was that you must have the a team, otherwise who is going to execute your dream? So Mr. Tata had a formidable issue of finding a team. The British uh, Viceroy said that if you can make a steel plant, I'll eat every pound of your steel, meaning that I am not going to help you. He went to England, no one helped him. He could not get a single person, so he went to USA. When he went to USA, he roped in one of the biggest steel makers of the world at that point of time, 1907. And he uh, got him to Jamshedpur, and in 1907 paid him a princely salary of one lakh a month. Please try to understand how much he was paid. He said he had to put up this steel plant. He said, I will. He was a metallurgist and Jamshedpur was a jungle. It was a forest with bears and elephants and everything. So his name was Charles Perrin. So we have a school in Jamshedpur in his name. He required another person. I mean, that's a metallurgist you have got. Now he required a steel fellow. So he got a, f a person called Mr. Keenan. He was a German. And there's a stadium in Jamshedpur named after him. Also paid him a very princely amount. And then he got a Mr. Bose, who located the spot for the steel plant. He said, you have got the... The second lesson was learnt, you have got your team. Main two teams, Mr. Bose was a geologist. He chose Jamshedpur. Two rivers, the raw materials are there. So the next step was... You have got the... Lo I mean, you have got the location, you have got the team. Now these are the lessons we learned that if you do not follow the process, you will never be a success. Now you must have raw materials. At that point of time, in 1907, he, he and his team thought you must have raw materials. So first he purchased an iron ore mine from those Maharajas and all, several iron ore mines, several coal mines, several uh, your chromite mines, all over the country, which subsequently became the biggest asset of this group. Because if you have your own captive mines, you can really become a very, very low-cost steel producer. So this is the third thing which went in the favor. Whereas the government was in its own unit. So the third lesson learned is, if you have to put up a factory, first you must have a plan, you must have a purpose, you must have the people, you must have a location, you must have the raw materials. Then you require lots of people and we require what we say as HR policies. So he started thinking or the group started thinking that what are the HR policies and how do we get the people. Initial batch of 150 people were all brought from abroad and they were brought to run a steel plant and to train other people because otherwise you won't get Indian trainees. And then uh, there should be some policies. So he started in